Today, we have Swathi Kumar with us. Swathi, thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I am a Verogen's Director of Product and Program Management, and as such, I lead Verogen's Global Product Strategy. My background and training is in genetics. I have a PhD where I minored in statistics, majored in genetics from the Penn State University. Um, and as part of that, really got very broad exposure to uh, genomic, next generation sequencing technologies and multivariate statistics. I took all of that and went to the market leader in genomics. I worked at Illumina in a variety of development, um, sales and product management capacities before I made my way over to Berigen. Excellent. Well, we're really happy to have you here. And I believe at Ishi this year, our 31st event, you gave a talk about GEDmatch. Um, can you, for viewers who might not know too much about it, can you summarize a little bit about it and what your talk was about? Oh, absolutely. Um, GEDmatch is a genetic genealogy website with over 1.4 million users who really want to learn more about their history, you know, the story of their family, their roots. Um, and we're set up with the mission of using science to connect people since its inception in 2010. It's been used by amateur and professional researchers and genealogists, including adoptees who were looking for their birth parents. So JetMatch users usually begin this process of discovery by taking a DNA test that's provided by a variety of direct to consumer companies, you know, such as Ancestry, 23andMe, MyHeritage, Family Tree, and others. Um, they upload the results of this test to GEDmatch, which allows them to compare their history with others, irrespective of the test that they performed or the vendor that they used. Um, GEDmatch, of course, rose to prominence in uh, following the arrest and prosecution subsequent sentencing of the notorious Jed, uh, Golden State Killer. Um, who was a former California policeman, Joseph D'Angelo, who eventually pled guilty to 13 counts of murder, 13 counts of kidnapping with robbery. And uh, the Golden State Killer had eluded uh, this statewide manhunt that began for him in the 1970s. And after decades of traditional investigative methodologies uh, turned up little to no clues or leads, the police got their first major break when they collected, uh, they compared DNA that had been collected at a crime scene with the data in GEDmatch. And that helped them narrow down that field of suspects. Um, so that's a little bit about GEDmatch and why Ishii was so focused on this new and emerging evolving field of forensic genetic genealogy. Yes, it's really been interesting to watch over the last few years. And that was an excellent summary. Thank you. That was beautifully done. Um, so it sounds like a lot of stakeholders are using GEDmatch, um, everything from forensic scientists to law enforcement. How do they interact with it? What are they doing now? What do you see for the future? That is such a great question because GEDmatch serves so many distinct users. And it's something that we at Verigen think long and hard about, you know, how do we continue to serve these different types of users? So on one side, you've got your traditional genealogists who are all your amateur genealogists who's trying to learn more about themselves. If uh, they are not able to make sense of the DNA data, they sometimes recruit the help of a genealogist and they have this community of users in GEDmatch who help them make sense of their DNA data, identify matches. Um, on the other side, increasingly, you also have uh, law enforcement um, that is looking to use GEDmatch to further the cause of public safety. And um, the way we think about these two distinct user types within GEDmatch is we want to make sure that those who use GEDmatch for personal reasons can continue to do so without impacting the law enforcement folks who are using GEDmatch to make, uh, make society safer, right? Um, and so what we have been doing at Virgin is uh, distinguishing or delineating these two workflows of your amateur genealogists or individual user of GEDmatch and really digging deep into how is it that law enforcement or a forensic operational lab 
um, could avail of Jed Match as part of their end-to-end -end investigative genealogy workflow. And uh, at Ishi this year, we announced that we would be launching a dedicated portal for law enforcement. What this allows us to do is to manage these two distinct users uh, separately and engage in a different conversation with each of them because the needs for each user type really are unique. Uh, their pain points are unique. And as the stewards of GEDmatch, we want to make sure that we are doing right by both our stakeholders. I, I think that's wonderful. And I think that was a, uh, was excellent to hear during this year's event. And I think that sort of segues nicely to the next question. Um, certainly with any tool like this that's new, there are privacy concerns that are raised. So how are you working with that or addressing that? Privacy is top of mind for everybody right now and rightly so, right? So. Um, we are a forensic company and our mission is to transform criminal justice and complex human identification by advancing technology that provides genetic and biometric linkages. And as, as stewards of GEDmatch, what we've been doing is really looking across the entire workflow, all the way starting with the lab, not just within GEDmatch, but outside of GEDmatch, to understand all of the points at which we can minimize privacy concerns, right? So um, what we also announced at Ishi was uh, that we would be releasing our own fit for purpose forensic genealogy assay that would be tightly coupled with this law enforcement portal. The reason we're doing this is today, users uh, of JetMatch, even law enforcement, they uh, use whole genome sequencing or they use array-based methods to generate a vast chunk of data, a majority of which is not relevant for forensic use, right? So you're already generating more than you need. Um, the assay that we are introducing uh, uh, includes only those SNPs or uh, markers that are relevant for forensic searching. Um, so automatically we're trying to reduce that space of DNA data that could cause, give someone pause for concern. Um, what we also do in JetMatch once you generate the data, irrespective of whether it's array based data or whole genome sequencing data, to the extent possible, um, we remove any medically relevant SNPs. Uh, right. So we strip them out right at the upload stage. That way, what you upload into GEDmatch usually is a subset of what you actually have. Um, and then within, once you upload that, all of that data is encoded. So uh, no one can really download your genotype at a later point. Um, what we've also done within GEDmatch, and we are really steadfast in our commitment to user privacy and data privacy. So what we've done is we have a number of control privileges within GEDmatch that the user, as a user of GEDmatch, you can avail of. So you can choose to say, I'm going to keep my data private. I don't want this data available for even the average Joe who's using GEDmatch to do any sort of comparisons against my data. You could say, I want that data to be available for comparisons with your average GEDmatch user because I am looking for familial connections, but I do not want law enforcement to have access to this data. And of course, we have had, we've had so many people uh, after the ABC show recently, the genetic de detective who signed up, who literally said they had no interest in performing genetic genealogy searches. They just wanted to uh, share their data with law enforcement so that they could do their part in making society safer. So you always have that level of uh, control as well, where you can choose to say, I want this data to be made accessible for law enforcement to compare their samples against. So that's how we think about privacy uh, at Perigin and JetMatch. It's really about putting control back in the hand of our users and not knowing that they will make the decision that is right for them. I think that was an excellent description. I think it will put a lot of people at ease to know how much control they have. And I think it's very interesting with the genetic detective, which I was watching as well, that it had, uh, that you received so much feedback from that. That's incredible. 
Yeah, we, we saw uh, the number of, uh, at Ishi actually, I, I had a slide where I was showing the growth rate in the number of profiles that we've been seeing. And we've seen a 15% growth since we, uh, since Verigin acquired Jetmatch, and this is in eight months, right? Um, and when the genetic detective and a whole bunch of other uh, TV shows, uh, news articles that have been coming out, every time that happens, we've seen a bump in usage. Uh, because there are there are a number of people who want to do their part in making society safer. Every, yeah. Everyone wants to be a crime fighter, right? <laughs> well, and I think genetic genealogy is so fascinating to everybody. I mean, it has a very high uh, popular culture. Uh, I mean, you, every day there's a new story. You can't. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, what else? What is next for you? What have, anything we missed? At Virgin, we uh, believe the spectrum of human identification requires quality across the board. And so we've made it our mission to advocate for all those who can't do that for themselves, you know, to give a voice to those who don't have one. So for, uh, for Jedmatch, as its steward, we want to empower our users to unlock the story behind every kit, you know, to find more than insights, to find answers. Um, similarly, with the rest of our portfolio, we also know that without our trusted technologies and our breakthroughs, some of these answers might never be found. And so we're committed to advancing the field of forensic. The, the cornerstone of our approach is our end approach platform, the MySeq FGX. This empowers the forensic community to apply high quality uh, MPS or NGS data to a diversity of human identification cases. Um, Ferrogen's Product innovation and invention pipeline is today enabling fully integrated applications that support routine and challenging cases. And moving forward, we expect to evolve these game-changing technologies like forensic genetic genealogy. Uh, via our trusted partnerships, we are also evolving applications like body fluid ID, enhanced phenotyping, and forensic metagenomics so we can accelerate this space. Um, we are at Verigin so focused on bringing this community the latest innovative solutions to solve the unsolvable faster than ever before. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking time to share that with us, participating in Ishi this year. Um, it was, you know, very unique having our 31st uh, go virtual. But uh, so, <laughs> and I'd love to hear your impressions of that. How were the sessions you attended aside from your presentation? I was amazed and blown away by how fantastic this uh, venue, digital venue was, the level of in, uh, interaction, it was unexpected. I went in expecting this to be like a Teams or a Zoom call, um, but it was so professionally managed. So I do want to say thank you to the organizers. They have just done a fantastic job. And thank you to all the speakers who quickly turned on the dime and delivered such fabulous talk. Quality did not suffer. In fact, I think it made Ishii so much more accessible to people who probably would not have traveled across the oceans to come to Texas. So I am excited to see what something like a virtual Ishii means for conferences like this moving forward. I, for one, was uh, blown away by both the quality of the presentations, the level of interaction, um, and I'm looking forward to Ishii 32. I am as well. And, and, you know, it's really interesting that you, what you just said, we had our largest crowd ever in terms of accessibility, maybe three times because I mean, it's a little bit easier without the travel. But uh, I know we do miss the in-person because it's such an amazing community. So it was good to see everybody's faces. That does make it better. <laughs> it, it's a small, tight community for sure. And I think Moving mm -hmm. forward, all of us can find a balance between the two, between access and having that same tight-knit feeling. Agreed. Yeah, the best of both worlds. That would be good. Yes, both. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Swathi. It was really gracious to spend so much time with us. We appreciate it so much. Thank you, Laura.